this week it is that I've gotten um, uh, actually in my life a lot of things are going on one thing after another I know a lot of other people might be dealing with that too um, basically he is our protector he is someone who's got us no matter what actually Lindsay go ahead and show that picture right now I know it's hard to see but this not my best work, but this is a painting I did a long time ago where um, it's hard to see, but that's me hanging by a thread. Long time ago when I had this uh, health affliction come upon me, I felt like life was just crazy. But the Lord has got me. He's got me. He's going to catch me if I fall. So right now this morning, I'm expectant. I am so totally expectant this morning. That's one thing that I know today is I'm expectant over what's going to happen with worship and everything today. And I hope you are too. Just be open. Just be open to what he has for you this morning, Lord. And I just thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, you're going to move this morning. I thank you for open hearts this morning. I thank you for hands raised, even though you may not be used to it that you're in the back row. I used to not be afraid to lift my hand. I thank you that we surrender to you this morning. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord.
circumstance, Lord. You've got me in the palm of your hand. You are not going to let me fall, no matter what I see before me. Lord, it's hard sometimes. I don't know what's going to happen financially. You may not know what's going to happen before you, but he's got you. He'll catch you. He won't let you fall. He just wants you to reach out to him right now. He just wants you to reach out to him. He's got the rest. He's got the rest. Just reach out to him.
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hoped Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside a tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. You have saved my 
Praise you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise you, Jesus. Praise just your offer, name. just, just offer him thanksgiving right now. Just say, just say it out loud. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. It's not about us, Lord. Right now, it's all about you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Um, right now, um, I want to pray for a couple of people. It's a great time to do this, and we've had some people that had some suffered some some real family loss. And um, George, can we pray for you, George? Can, do you mind coming down here, buddy? I want I want you to come down here. I want some men to come down here and lay hands on George with me. So George has has really gone through a rough time. Um, I went up to the hospital with him. When, when was that, George? Was that in De December? Was that October? Was that October? I went up to see his mom. His mom was fighting cancer. and Went up to the hospital with him, and, um, and she passed away right in front of us right there. And, um, and then on Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Friday night, his dad just passed away. And so, you know, he's, he's lost his mom and dad. He has a... Uh, older brother? Mario's older than you? Is Mario younger? He's younger? Okay. So why don't you guys come around here? Turn this way, George. Come here. Yeah. Father, we just thank you right now in this time of grief that, Lord, you watch over him. Thank you, Lord. You comfort him with the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Just as you've comforted all of us when we've had lo lost loved ones. Lord, be his father. Thank you, Lord, right now. Be that father that now he's, he's lost. But, Lord, you're the, you're the best father. And you'll comfort him. I pray you wrap your arms around him and let him know, Lord, that you are his. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that he will get through this. And you will walk with him, with your Holy Spirit, every step of the way. You will be his strength. I pray, Lord, he lean into you. He lean into the everlasting arms of Jesus. He lean and rest upon you. And thank you for your rest in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You bet. I've known George since he was a teenager. He was a squirrely teenager. He's not squirrely anymore. Uh, Vonnie, come up here. We want to pray for Vonnie. And can, yeah, Michelle and your friend, some ladies. Vonnie, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Has it been two weeks? The 7th of, it's been 11 days. The 7th of February. And she lost her husband. And, um, I got to know him a little bit. We, banjo picker. Banjo. And, and banjo and went over there one time at their apartment off of Holgate, and, and we played bluegrass music together. It was the highlight of my life. <laughs> you don't find too many bluegrass players, right? Father God, I thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your strength. Lord, that you can rest in your arms just as he is, Lord. And Lord, that she knows in her heart everything is well. Everything is well with him. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, that you are watching over her. And Lord, holding tight and holding fast to you. And holding fast to your comfort. She's resting in you as he is resting in you. Thank you, Lord, for carrying her through this whole time. And that she can rest assured that you will never leave her. You will never forsake her. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
God bless. Thank you, Lord. So I think there's a theme again in the house, Mary. So this morning, I was just praying while I was getting ready for church, and I was like, Lord, what would you have me say to your people today? And he gave me a message early this week, and I shared it with my family this week, and um, I wrote it down, and there was an overwhelming message of be strong and courageous. And there was, the, the word was basically there's a tunnel, you're in a tunnel, it's dark, it's damp, it's scary, you hear the dripping water, you hear the creeping things, and it's fearful, and you feel, feel paralyzed, and you're looking straight down the center at, at the light at the end of the tunnel, and you're, you're too paralyzed to go forward, and you need to go forward. Keep going forward. God's message was, I'm with you. I've got you. I'm, I'm not going to leave you. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Keep your eyes forward. And you've got to keep going because the living word, the life of God springs up out of you and is what the world needs, right? Don't give them what the world gives them. Give them the living life of Jesus, right? Then I immediately just opened the Bible because I was thinking of Rahab, how bold she was to do what she did. And if you don't know, I'm going to encourage you to get into Joshua and read about Rahab. But I opened up the Bible (laughs) right after I wrote this down. And I wrote down, Lord, speak to me. And I opened this up, and this is what, I'm going to give you the high points. I want you to go read Joshua 1. But I'm going to give you the high points of what I saw. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. The Lord spoke to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. Okay, Jesus commissioned us, just like God commissioned Joshua. Then he said, skipping ahead, no man shall be able to stand before you All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Right? Be strong and of good courage. Skip down. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do, dot, 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 the word. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Don't look that way. This book of the law shall, be, shall, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That's where our power comes from, the word, right? Our knowledge. That you may observe to do according to all of it, as it is written, that you, may make your, you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong. And of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Right? Skip down to the end of that chapter. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words, and all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. I don't know what you're going through, but there's a theme that Jesus wants you to know. He's got you. Stare straight ahead. Keep on moving. Don't look at the things that are around you that are scary. They're shadows. They're, they are literally powerless against the Almighty God. And he's got you. So, all right. Just, I know that God wants somebody to hear that today. <laughs> yeah. Amen. There's, in Genesis, it says that there is a seed time and a harvest. It's a principle in God's word, and it applies to every area of our life. If you sow, I was thinking about this, I'll tell you about where I was this last week, but if you sow judgment, you will reap it. The Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. So be merciful, and guess what? You'll get mercy. 
That's just one area. Uh, another is finances. If you'll sow into the kingdom of God, and it, let me tell you, it's a work of faith. And that's where most people don't get it in, in the church, is they have to realize, you because you, it's, that is not money, okay? You, you Look, we look at this, and you see money. But what's really there is blood, sweat, and tears, in, depending on what you do for work. Right, Dawn? <laughs> and, and, and so it's, it's more than that. It's, it's what you, you work for. But we have to realize Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. So everything that we have, the job we have, the retirement we have, all that we have, whatever you got, came from the Lord. And the kingdom of God does not move forward without money. It's just that simple. But it takes an act of faith to say, I'm going to sow this. And the farmer, when he sows, he puts it in there, but he doesn't go back two days later and look and see if it's starting to germinate. He just keeps watering it, he keeps watering, and he waits for the harvest. It's the same thing with us. We sow, this is what Paul said, he said, if you sow a little, you'll reap a little. You're going to reap something, but it's better to be generous, and that's what the Bible talks about, and Paul talked about it. It's better to be generous because, see, I remember Tozer said, oh, Believe that you don't own anything. Nothing is yours. It's all the Lord's. See, in the Old Testament, it wasn't that way. You gave 10%. You owed 10%. New Testament, there's no, there's no law. It's all on what you purpose in your heart. But we ought to, what should be purposed in our heart is generosity. And I speak from myself because I was stingy. I did it. I went along with my wife, but she was wanting to give like everything. And, and I mean, she wasn't, but she's very generous. And so I just want to encourage you, take that step of faith and believe God that when you sow, he's going to not add. Paul didn't say that. Paul said he would multiply your seed. He would multiply it. But it's a step of faith. And if you know God won't leave you or forsake you. If you know that God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory, he will come through. He's never failed me, and he never will. Amen? Father God, we thank you right now for this offering. We thank you, Lord, that you take this seed and you multiply it. Lord, we need it to keep the lights on. We need it to pay our missionaries. We need it to fulfill the vision that you've given us to reach our neighborhood and influence our neighborhood. And that takes money for the things we want to do. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will do what your word says. In his name we pray and everyone said, amen. The, the, music, the, the songs that you picked out, Mary, and you didn't know what I was teaching on. And there's so much that was said today, and along with, uh, what Jeff, and by the way, I told Jeff, I go, dude, you really messed me up. He's in trouble. So, but the, th the songs that we sang today, and this happens all the time, all the time. They go right along with what I'm teaching. It's, a, it's incredible that I never tell anybody usually what we're doing, and the songs that we sang today, so I have been wanting to, I, I mentioned when I gave the vision that I wanted to do this series. And so I'm going to, I thought, Lord, what, which, where am I going? Where am I going? So sit, walk, stand. So we're not even going to get out of the book of Ephesians. So the book of Ephesians is a fascinating book. It's a very theological, it's a deep theological book, the first part of it. And it's about as, uh, theologically, uh, well, I'm trying to word, I would think, I mean, it's deep as, as Romans. I would put it in there with Romans. And so what it is, is if we look at Ephesians 2, 6, is uh, the sit, and he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 4, 1, 
says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you, you were called. And then Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And verse 14, or 12, no, it, did I, is it 12? 14. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So there you have sit, walk, and stand. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. We thank you, Lord, that we're not just hearers a day, but we're doers, that we understand where we're seated and why it matters. In Jesus' name, and we will produce fruit for your kingdom. In his name we pray, and everyone said, amen. I love this part of this whole book, because there was a time in my life when I was a new believer, and I did not know who I was in Christ. I was new, and I was scared spitless of the devil. Just telling you, he came, came at me, and not him. Listen, here's something every believer ought to know. It's not always Satan, okay? Let's not get too high fluting that every time the evil comes, it's the devil himself. There's demons galore. There's unclean spirits galore, okay? We have no clue. All we know is when they were booted out in the rebellion in heaven, we know that a third of them were out. How many is that? I'm thinking, I'm thinking thousands. Jesus dealt with, you know, hunt, well, we don't know how many dealt with, but we know a lot of instances. So I think a lot of times that we are attacked, it's not necessarily Satan himself. He's got a lot of uh, workers, exactly. But I was, I was a new believer, and I was uh, sleeping, and this, I woke up, and there was something very, very dark in my room. I knew it was a presence. I was a new believer. All I knew was one thing, and it's the only thing I needed to know. And it's, uh, I later learned that Martin Luther wrote a song called, uh, it's a famous hymn for the Lutheran church, and it's, what a mighty fortress is our God. And there's a word, there's a line in there that says, one little word will fail him. And all I, I didn't know that hymn, but later on I said, yeah, that's right. And this darkness was in my room, and all I could do was just go, Jesus, and gone. I went, oh, something works. <laughs> that works. And then I had another instance where I had this dream, and I was going down this highway, and there was all these, it was pitch black. It was a summer night. And there's all this, I go down, I see all these sirens and everything, and I come driving by real slow. It was a horrible accident. And then I keep going down the road, pitch black. I see all these sirens and, you know, cops and, and cars and ambulances. Another horrible wreck. And then I keep going, it's pitch black, and I have my window down, and this evil-looking face, I can't even describe it, just looks and goes, you're next. I went, Poof. I mean, I sprang right out of my bed, and I, I went, Jesus, help me. <laughs> but that put fear in me. And then I learned later, Annie got me a book. I wasn't even, we weren't, I might have been dating, I don't remember, but she gave me a book called, and I highly recommend this if you are, if you, even if you're not uh, fighting evil or, or to, to know your position, and that is the book, The Authority of the Believer. There's a lot of, there's different authors out there. Mine is, you know, Brother Hagin's book, you know, Kenneth Hagin's book on the authority of believer. So we're going to talk about where, as believers, we sit in Christ Jesus, how we walk before believers and unbelievers, and how we stand before our enemy. So you'll always, you'll, this will be easy to remember. Sit, walk, stand. So now if we go to Ephesians 1.20, it says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things 
under his feet. So you say, well, Pastor Steve, in the body of Christ, I feel like I'm just a little toe. That's all right. The devil's under your feet if you're in Christ Jesus. You may be the heel, but he's still under your feet. And he gave him to be head over all things to the church. And he put all things under his feet and gave him th things over to what Verse 23, did I have that in there, Lynn's? I don't remember. Okay, so that's good enough right there. Now, Paul prays this prayer for believers at Ephesus, and then he says this. He says he seated Jesus Christ at his right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 1.20, you see that? And he, in which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So being seated at his right hand means that he has the exact authority as the Father. He has the exact same authority as the Father. Why? Because he is, is the representation of the Father. That's just what it says in Hebrews chapter 1. He is the exact representation of the Father. They carry the same authority. And so heavenly places is that invisible realm that we can't see. But guess what? Jesus rules it. He rules it. He is not only our Savior, but He is our Sovereign. Now, what Sovereign mean? Now, I, I, this is one of the things that is kind of one of my pet peeves. I don't bring it up a lot. But, uh, you know, there's a teaching out there that, um, I can get to my, my photographs here. Because uh, I took a picture of this. There's, there's a teaching it within, um, and we, you know, we are not, I am not a Calvinist by any stretch of the imagination, okay? Because Calvinism says that God is totally sovereign. And what that means is everything that happens is the will of God. Everything. Every evil thing, every good thing. All of it is under the sovereignty of God. And they love to use this word, total sovereignty, because he predestined everything, which is wrong, okay? He predestined some for heaven. He predestined some for hell. And in doing that, he holds them responsible for their sin when he, in fact, was behind them doing their sin. So how can they be responsible? Well, that's Calvinism, all right? I'm bringing it down in a, in a small sense of it, okay? But I want you to know that God is sovereign, and all that word means, what they do is they twist that word to make it, they bring in total sovereignty. When he, what he is, he's sovereign. Well, what does sovereign mean? It means this. It's one that exercises supreme, permanent authority, especially in a nation or a government unit. In other words, he's the boss. He's the boss. And then it also means a king or queen or a noble person who serves as a chief of state, a ruler, or a monarch. So basically, God is sovereign in that he is the governor of the universe. But he certainly lets us do what we want to do. Now, does he interfere in the affairs of man? Absolutely. What about the cross? He got us out of the way so that he could... Get his way to get us back. We sang that. So, do we have will? Yes. I'll give you three verses. I only need two. Let every fact be confirmed by two or more witnesses. I'll give you two in the old. I'll give you one in the new. Two in the, two in the old. G uh, in, at, um, at, in Joshua, what did he say? He said, Joshua 24. He says, Choose this day whom you will serve. Who? You choose. As for my house, it's right on my front door. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What is that? That's up to you. You choose. You choose whom you will serve. That's free will. Another one in Isaiah, chapter 1, I want to say about verse 16. He said, if you be what? Willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you are disobedient, you won't. It will devour you. It's your choice. You make the choice. 
I think it's Isaiah 1, 16 or 18. It's right there where, uh, though our sins be as scarlet, they will be white as snow. It's right there. And then, come let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will, shall be as wool. If you are willing, 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's exactly what happened. They chose, over time, they chose the wrong thing. Now, here's the last one. Matthew 23. At the very end of Matthew 23, Jesus is, this is when he pronounces the seven woes to the Pharisees. And at the end of it, he said, he said, how I wanted to gather you together as a hen does her chicks. But you were not willing. The Israelites, the, the, to gather your children as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. So there it is. See, your house is left to you desolate. Yep. Okay. So there you have the, yes, God is sovereign. But he also lets us have a free will. Now, we have our own sovereignty, but it's limited. Okay, because God will intervene in certain times. You know, like God intervened in my life, saving me. And then he also intervened and said, you're going to be a pastor. What? No. No, yes, you are. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. Right? Do you know how many men and women have turned down the gifts and callings of God? Plenty. Okay, but if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of land. I've been eating the good of land for a long time. You're the good of land. Thank you very much. So then, so he is sovereign and he is far above. Now, the Greek there means, far above means a marker of superior status, suggesting an additional factor of degree, considerably superior to. He's far above all principalities, powers, and every name that is named. Okay, he's far above any authority, any power, any human, or any spirit. That's why those demons go, what are you going to do with us? What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? Why are you here? Uh, you know, in the, I love the ones in the pigs, you know. <laughs> the, 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 don't, don't, you know don't send us back to the abyss. Just let us, let us go, you know. The, so he pitched them off. They weren't supposed to have pigs anyway. That's why he allowed that. So Paul prays this prayer. So the Ephesians gain understanding to who Jesus is. You got to know who he is. And the Greeks and the Romans, now they had their gods. The Romans just stole the Greek god. Okay? Okay? The, the, the Greeks had, um, they had uh, Zeus. He was the head honcho, and uh, the Romans had Jupiter, okay? So, but what they never had in their gods, their gods never died and rose again. That makes Jesus all different than all others. Mohammed, you can go to Mohammed's grave. You can go, I don't know if you, if you can go to Buddha's grave, but Buddha never, they never said he rose from the dead. That's what makes Jesus different than every other one. Now, in verse 22, it said that God put all things under Christ's feet, and he is the head of the church. Okay? Everything's under his feet. Now, Ephesians 2. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 1. Now, I love this part because you'll notice how it talks about we are together. And he made, we were singing this. And you were made alive who were dead and trespasses in sins. Yes, that gives a yes. Thank you, front row. Thank you. In which you, it's my amen corner down here. In which you once walked, and you did, or you are. In which you, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now, at that time, and still now, works in the sons of disobedience among whom also 
we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the other. This is wonderful. This is why you should, if you're around people who are not saved, remember this, and you got no stones to throw. That's why I could go into those bars and hang out with these guys, and, but I'm going to be me, and if they ask me about Jesus, I'm going to tell them. But I'm not going to say, hey, oh, I, w- I wouldn't tell my brother. I'm not going to go in there. Sinners. Drunkards. God forbid that I hang out with them. I'm so holy. I'm so perfect. Ask my church. Yeah, look at Cindy, you're laughing louder than anybody. Stop it. But God, this is the this is one of the best verses in the whole Bible. But God. See, you can say, well, I did this and I did that, and I've done this and I've done that. And what you're saying is, but, but, but. And the Bible's God's but is bigger than yours. Because he says, he says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Just, God, just think about that. Even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive. Not alive separate, but alive together. Pastor Steve, you're a little fired up. Yes! I love this stuff. I love this stuff. He made us alive together, not as separate from him, together with him. And I love that little part. By grace, you have been saved. And then verse 6. And then what? He raised us up. He made us alive. And then he raised us up together. And he made us sit together. And you go, well, wait a minute, Pastor Steve. I'm right here on planet Earth. Ah, not spiritually. No, no, no. There's two realms. See, made us, he really raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God the Father made us alive, raised us up together, made us sit together, and now he ra- and Jesus is seated with him, and we're in Christ Jesus. So we're seated with him, and we rule and reign in him. Here. Here. Now, here's the question. What does it mean to be in Christ? When you think of that, you go, how do I I wrap my head around that? You know, he's there. His Holy Spirit's inside me. But how am I in him when he's there? So if you picture a circle, too bad I can't turn this up back. But, Michael, come here. No, (laughs) We could do the bottom. So if you had a circle, imagine you have a circle, and the believer is in that circle, and in that circle represents and contains all that represents King Jesus, because he's the sovereign. He's the Lord. So inside that circle is everything that represents and contains who Jesus is, and it re, re, inside that is his salvation conquest, what he conquered. So he conquered death, he conquered sin, and because we're in him, we conquer death and we conquer sin. See, I, I, there are things I did before I had, I could not stop doing. As hard as I tried, I could not stop doing. I got in Jesus and I stopped doing. How? There's, because of the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside. And he's ruling and reigning in me as long as I give him rule and reign. That's the other part of the, of the equation. Inside that circle represents all that he conquered for me and made me more than a conqueror. But also in that is his personal rule. Now, people might, Some people like that. See, people say, I want Jesus as Savior, but I don't want him as Lord. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I said, well, is your brother, is your sister, your mom, and your dad, are they saved? Well, Jesus is their Savior, but he's not their Lord. 
That's not Bible. Yeah, he has to be Lord. He has to be Lord. The Bible, the, in, you know, the Ephesians, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, that if you confess Jesus as Savior, no, confess Jesus as Lord, Lord, big difference. Lord means I'm giving him control. He's my master. He's my sovereign. He's my king. And I'm going to do what he says. Why? Because it just goes better. It just goes better. You know, you live in any kingdom. I don't care what kingdom you live in. If, if you are good with the king and you obey the rules of the land that you're in, it goes well with you. You know? I lived in this world in the kingdom. And I did all kinds of things that got me in all kinds of trouble. Why? Because I was breaking the law. So they, they say, hey, you don't do that. So I want Jesus inside that circle. He's not only co conquered for me, but I have given him rule and reign over my life. And he's a good king. He's a really, really good king. He's not, you know, he's not like uh, 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 who's uh, Ivan the Terrible, all right? <laughs> You know, he's good. He's a good king. And so that's what that means. And living in his kingdom and being in Christ brings two things. It brings two, a dual hope. And that hope, those two things, that hope is eternity with him. That's the anchor, you know, the hope is that I'm going to be with him someday. Your, your loved ones who loved him and served him, they're with him. That's our hope. And the other hope that we have and that we should know right now is that we have grace, which is what? His power working in me. Don't think of it as, un, it, it, yes, it's, un, it's unmerited favor, that's true. But really, he, Paul said, I do what I do by the grace of God. In other words, it's a power working in me that enables me to do what I do. I sit with him by grace, I walk with him by grace, and I stand with him by grace. Romans 5.1, in this grace in which we stand. And so, the, the other part, the other dual hope is that I, I have this hope that I am reigning. I have this truth, really, it's a faith, that I am reigning in life right now with him. Because I'm more than a conqueror. When I'm in Christ, I'm not a loser. Well, I'm a winner. And I tell you what, I like winning. I really like winning. In fact, I hate losing. When you're the younger brother, you lose every time. Every time. I want to get those three out on the golf course and show them, but they don't care now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we live in two spheres. The believer lives in two spheres. We live in a visible one. That's right here. We live in a human one. We live in a divine one. And we live in an invisible one. So I'll put it that way. We, we live in a human one and a divine one. That's one sphere. And then we live in this visible and invisible one. Okay? So now here's, here's what you understand. There's... In Ephesians, what he's really bringing out here, and I'm not going to get through this. There's just, just no way. <laughs> so, next week. So, here's the thing that, that, that Paul's really bringing out here, is there's an experiential truth, and there's a positional truth. The experiential part is what you know Jesus to be in your life. The positional part is where you are in Christ. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so physically we're here on earth. And I experience him here on earth. This morning we experienced him here on earth by the presence of his Holy Spirit. When we were worshiping, worshiping him, it was powerful in here. It was, like, it was like a cloud almost. You could just sense his presence and his power. And... That's the experiential part. But then there's the positional part, and that is that I am in a he heavenly sphere when I'm in Christ because he's there. But what did it say? I'm seated with him there, right? 
I'm seated with him there, and that's where my power comes from. That's where my power comes from. It doesn't come from here. It comes from there. See, it's knowing that I'm in Christ in the heavenly sphere, sphere, sphere that I walk in power and authority. I'll say that again. It's knowing that I'm in Christ in a heavenly sphere that I walk on power and authority on earth. On earth. Is this too deep for anybody? Am I making it clear? Good. Okay, so I sit in power, I walk in power, and I stand in power, all by the power of the Holy Ghost, and because I'm in Christ. Outside of Him, I don't have any power. How many of you understand that? How many of you know that? You know, I didn't have the power to resist temptations. Sometimes, yeah, but overall, gave in. Just gave in. Tired of fighting. Just give in. Especially when in, in, in my drug abuse. And the heavenly sphere provides the power. See, I can't walk. I can't, uh, I can't sit. I can't walk. I can't stand in the power that's available if I don't realize that it comes from, where it comes from, and who gave it to me. So you got to know that. See, if you're going, well, Pastor Steve, I just feel defeated, and I feel like I'm getting run over by the devil. Well, do you know who you are in Christ? See, you got to know who you are in Christ. See, I didn't know who I was, and that's why the devil was coming after me. Because he knows. They watch. These devils, they watch. They watch. Hey, hey, we got a newbie. We got a newbie. He just got saved on September 9th. Get him. Get him and get that word out of his heart. That's what it says. The word comes, and the devil comes and tries to snatch it out. But I was determined, no, no, I've been running for God so far, so long, I'm tired. I'm done running. And so I surrendered, but he doesn't, that doesn't mean you're, 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 he's not coming. Weapons will be formed against you. They will try to be formed against you. That's what you sang about. But what did Isaiah say? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I don't want to go. I don't want to be in the valley of the shadow of darkness. Listen, you just walk through it. It's there, but you walk through it. Because you got somebody walking with you. So the same, what do we what do we sing? The same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in me, lives in me. So we sing it. You, when you're singing that, man, you ought to be singing like that. Bam, bam, man, I got it. I got that power. That power that rose Jesus from the grave, man, I got it. Woo! There's fun. Yeah. Now watch this. The President of the United States is not always seated at his desk. Okay? He's taking naps. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. He's in the basement taking naps. My wife told me when I told her I was going, she said, Don't you say that. Sweetie, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Devil made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but watch. That chair represents the sphere of his life and power. See, no matter where he is, the President of the United States, because only he has the privilege of sitting at that desk. So wherever he is, it doesn't matter. He's still president. He's still the president. Now, when he walks into that Oval Office, you, you can imagine. Can you imagine being the president and you go the first time you go in the Oval Office and you sit in that chair and you realize, oh, my, I am the leader of the free world. It's a big responsibility. It's huge. So wherever he goes, he has that authority of what he, could, he can say this, he can do this, he can let off nuclear missiles. He can. 
So now let's look at the believer. Okay? No matter where you are or where I may be on this earth, I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Yeah. I'm in this realm, but I'm also in that realm. In Christ. You see that? Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's incredible. And that is, watch, that's the basis, that's the foundation of our life and power. Knowing who we are in that circle. That we're in Christ. He's, he's the circle, so to speak. And inside that circle is his power, his authority, and his rule. And his conquest. And so if he conquered the enemy, just like at the, 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 the uh, temptation, what did he do? It is written. It is written. It is written. When he comes and, and, and he, any devil, unclean spirit says something, you go, it is written. It is written. If it worked for him, it works for us. That's why he did it. He set an example for us. Okay? So... As I mentioned earlier, that the believer needs to know where he or she is and what they have. Or the enemy will take advantage of it. He'll take advantage of us. So, uh, you got to realize who, you know, where we are seated in Christ Jesus. And he rules in the spiritual realm. And we rule in the spiritual realm with him because we're in him. So you don't have to get concerned about, oh, I'm being attacked. I'm going to let the devil do this. No, fight back. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. It's not a bad fight. It's a good fight. You know, you've seen bad fights. <laughs> I've seen bad fights. But I've seen the good fight is the good fight of faith. And, you know, uh, like I said, you can imagine a president goes first sits down in the Oval Office by themselves. And it's got to be a humbling thing. It's got to be a humbling thing. And then, the, you know, the realization that, that I am the president of the United States and that, that you have inherited this tremendous uh, amount of power. Now, uh, I'm going to close with this. Uh, when I learned what it meant to sit with Jesus in heavenly places, that the power that he has over the principalities, over powers, over authorities, over might, over dominions. And every name that is named, it changed my life. And I learned by just simply going like that book, Authority of Believer. And that first part, man, he goes through Ephesians chapter 1 and sees where I'm seated. And I went, oh, man. And I went to the guys at church. And they were all standing in the lobby there at New Song Church. And I walked in there. I go, man, I just saw him reading this book. <laughs> you know, rah, rah, fired up. And they go, well, what is what? And I go, man, I got, I got authority over the devil. And I was scared. But, man, I got power. I got authority. And they go, what have you been reading? And I go, the authority of the believer. And they go, okay, well, good for you. And so, so uh, and, you know, if we don't realize it and that we are a threat, remember this, we are a threat to the king of darkness. I think that's awesome. Devil, you got nothing on us. I'm in Christ. I'm in the, I'm in the overcomer. I'm in the triumphant king. I rule and reign with him in this kingdom here on earth. The kingdom is here now. We're not waiting for it. We're waiting for the culmination, the final culmination of it. But right now, I am ruling and reigning with him. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I may be the pinky, but that's good enough. Like I said, you could be the heel, but you're still even better. I'd rather be the heel. I got it in my head. My foot's right on him, spiritually speaking, positionally speaking. And you got to know that you have this. In fact, I am gonna, I'm, I'm gonna close with this because this illustration. So, how many know who William Randolph Hearst was? Two people raised their hand. Three. 
So William Randolph Hearst owned a huge, uh, he owned uh, newspapers all over the United States. Huge influence. In fact, they, they, historians blame him for the Spanish-American War and, and, and because he, he had so much influence what he could put into his newspaper. Well, anyway, he's very wealthy, extremely wealthy. Built this beautiful place down on the Big Sur called San Simeon. And he collected art and tons and tons of art. And he was heard about this piece that, that, that he thought was for sale and that somebody was looking for it or something. And so he thought, well, I'll buy it before anybody can buy it. So he sent one of his guys, he says, go look for this piece. I want to know where it is. And you find it. And uh, I, think, I think they said, this is a true story. And, and, and they, they couldn't find it. They knew somebody had purchased them and nobody knew where it was. And so he sent this guy out and says, try and find where this thing is. So he sent him all over, I mean, over the globe looking for it. And this guy came back and he says, guess what, Mr. Hurst? He goes, what? He goes, you own it. You own it. See, all this time that he owned that piece of, of, of art, he didn't realize that he owned it. And a lot of believers have no clue the power that resides on the inside. They don't realize the spiritual power that they have. It's right there. It's in Christ Jesus. All you got to do is read the manual, and it will tell you where it is. That's where it is. And so you got to go and find out wh in, where that spiritual realm, the wealth that is in that spiritual realm, and tap into it. And tap into it. God, God has given us He's got this heavenly bank account that we can draw from all the time. And that, that, that bank account, there's power there. And when I need it, I got to draw from it. Yeah. And I can walk in power and authority. But most of us don't know how, where it is. And we don't realize how important it is to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Because so much, the, a lot of the church walks defeated. And we shouldn't, if we know who we are in Christ, doesn't mean we're not going to, you know, you know uh, lose a battle. I mean, you know, listen, sometimes you just lose. You know, but overall, we always win. In the end, we win. You know, sometimes you give in to a temptation you didn't want to. You know, things like that. But overall, that's why the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times a righteous man. Because he can repent and say, I'm sorry, uh, Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me. Forgives you, and you move on. You walk in grace. Okay? So, Paul wanted us to know the wealth that is in that heavenly realm, where we are seated. And to know that we're seated with authority, with power, with might, and dominion. And here's the thing. It's not ours. It's, it, it, it doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from us. So there's no, there's no, there's no place for, for bragging, you know, that I'm something special. No. Everything we have is in him. He gave it to us. He fought for it. He won it. And now we just receive it. Say, I walk in power and authority. Amen. Amen. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I was made alive together with him. I am seated together with him. Amen. I think there's, was there one more? Was there one more? I was alive. I was seated. Well, anyway. I, I was, oh, I was raised up together with him. See, we were buried because he was buried, but he rose up and we rose up with him. That's in that song. Amen? All right, praise God. Father God, we thank you right now. Thank you for your truth, Lord. Thank you. We, we honor you today, Lord, that you give us these just deep spiritual truths that we know we've experienced you, Lord here on earth, but we also need to know 
where we are seated with you and the power that is available to us over every principality, over every power, over everything that uh, is against you, we have power and authority over it because we're in you. And the authority we have because of your name, we thank you for your name. If you're here today, when you're, you're here and you say, I don't know that. I don't know that authority. I don't even know Jesus. I heard a lot about him. I know he's good. I know he paid for my sins, but I never said, Jesus, come into my heart. I want to be born again. I want a new lease on life. I want to know you. I want to know you like these others in this room know you. And I want that. I need that. If that's you, I want to pray for you. And we will have somebody, we'll pray for you right here. Somebody will take you back there. And they will pray with you. And they will show you the way to salvation. If that's you and you want that, just raise your hand. And you can go back there and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Really as your Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Father, I thank you right now that your word has not fallen on deaf ears. Thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth. And, Lord, it, um, it, will, it just as the rain comes down and gives seed to the flower, it will not return void. It has done its work. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. amen.